Good night, everybody. For me, anyway, it's uh, just past 6 p.m., I believe. For Tom, it's 4. Yeah, about 4 p.m. Yeah, it's probably already getting dark. It is indeed, yeah. Yeah, it's pitch dark here already. Um, welcome to another uh, heart to heart and honest conversation about the writing process. Uh, today, I invited Tom Evans, uh, who is a very prolific writer, and he's also an Inside Timer celebrity. And that's actually, I think, how we met. Like, in Inside Timer is my go to meditation app. I think that's how we met. It's how we got to talking for Inside Timer. It was, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, I invited Tom today because Tom um, has been, like I said, he's a prolific writer. Like you've published a book every year for the past 15 years. Is that correct? Yeah, no, probably about um, 12 years, but 15 books in about 12 okay. years. Yeah. yeah, so for me, that's very prolific. Uh, but at the same time, there's this one book you've been working on for that same amount of time. Yeah, I started that before. I started before any of the other books, yeah. yeah. And... You said it just 10 minutes ago, you uploaded the EBOP file. So it's done and it's coming out in January. Yeah, and I, I did the uh, hardback version, the paperback version, and the EPUB all got uploaded today. I'm just reviewing the last 20 chapters of the audiobook version. Now I'm going to upload that probably at the end of this week. So it's going to be a simultaneous publication in all four formats, which I'm looking yes. forward to. So that's, that's what you wanted to talk about today, how you can work on one book for so many years while well, you publish so many other books at the same time and why some books take that amount of time to write while some others just, you know, they just come and they just, mm. um, that's what you wanted to talk about today. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. so for, do you want to tell us first about this book that you you're finalizing right now? So that, because that's the first book you started writing. Yeah. It's called soul waves and it's a, it's my first full novel. Everything else I've written, I've, I've written two, two, uh, lots of short stories and 13 books on of nonfiction. And, but before I started writing any of them, I had this idea of um, writing a book that told the whole story of how we got here and where we're going. So it's a big, big tome. It starts 150 years ago and it goes on 150,000 years into the future. So it spans a, a great space of time and also many light years in in space and so even though it's it's a sort of science fiction story it's more metaphysical and, mm -hmm. and visionary and and it started in um i got the idea in south africa I just have a had, had a shower after a hot day on safari i turned around in the shower and there was a tarantula behind me in the shower big spider so I called up reception to get the tarantula out and uh, I was pretty sort of shaky after it. And they said it wouldn't have killed you, but you would have had a, a nasty bite. You would have been in hospital. So I had a, a strong G and T to calm my nerves. And at the time I was reading this book called The Phenomenon of Man by a Jesuit philosopher called Teilhard de Chardin. Amazing book written in about 1955. But it's really difficult. And I've got loads of books like that. And I had this light bulb moment. What would it be like if I took all these difficult books that nobody read because they're in the mind body spirit section of the bookshop and I made a story up to get all these wonderful concepts out so I wrote the book pretty quickly um, must have got to 60,000 words pretty quickly and I knew even back then I knew it wasn't the right time to publish it it was pretty raw it was my first effort at writing so I sat on it for a while so I sat on it for a long long time while I wrote all the other books and then on my my 59th birthday I spent it at my best friend from school's funeral on my birthday I, I was at his funeral and I thought by the time I'm 60 I must get this book out because what happens if I, I I don't make it to 60 another book got in the way a 15th book got in the way called the big U, and uh, and I finally said right I'm going to get it out this year so it's uh, it's out so I'm pretty pleased it's going to be out before I'm 61 which is pretty damn good that's still a good so when so when when what year was it like when were you on the safari 2005, 2005, so that's 14 years. 14 yeah. years in the making. Yeah, I, that, I recognize that because I was about 14 myself. So that's yeah. in the meantime, I always said I started working on my book like 10 years ago. In the meantime, that's almost 20 years ago. Um, yeah. But that's like my big project. So I can do other things in between, but there is this big project. And for some reason, it needs all this time. I, I yeah, just, and I always yeah. research it. I was keeping up my own new scientists. And I was always looking at things I could use yeah. in the book so I, I, I had it as a Shrivener project for many many years so I just kept adding bits and notes to, to it and what have you and uh, it's about three or four years ago that I met somebody 
Actually, I've always liked Dan Brown, you know, even though I don't really totally enjoy the books. I like his, 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 his success. I admire his success. And also the fact that you can't put his books down because he has several plot lines that run through it. And the first version yeah. of the book, I just had one plot line, you know, a plot A that went, starts here and ended up here. And it was pretty monolithic, pretty boring, I'd say. And I completely changed the, the, the version now. Um, so it's got three of uh, two or three different plot lines running through it that are intertwining and it makes it more interesting for all of that. Well, that's one of the things I recently discussed with one of my editing clients that uh, somebody from the self-publishing industry, and of course what the, the what, what we're known for in the self-publishing industry is that, you know, you, you do a good, you try a good draft and then you have a few, you know, a few other drafts, but then you're done. But for some projects, they need, that constant rewriting to get all these layers in. They do, yeah. And the, there's only yeah. one event that's in the original book that's really in this book, and that's a, a calamity that happens 150 uh, light years away, and it takes 150 years to get here, and it takes all life out on Earth. So that's the, that's the core event, if, if you like. And the point, Spoiler! Yeah, well, no, it's okay, it's okay, because it's not a spoiler, because that's not the point. It's, that's that really not, that's not the point. The point is that these things happen, and they've happened before and they'll happen again. Yeah. And anyway, that's not the end of the book, right? Uh, and and if, if it wasn't for these events, then we wouldn't be here having this conversation. And also then the, the latter part of the book wouldn't have happened, which I'm not going to tell you about. Good, good, because I do want to read it. So don't 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 spoil the actual... Uh... No, but it's no, interesting. It's, it's, yeah. it's like a murder. You know those books where you, you get the murder at the beginning? Yeah, and then it unravels, and then you want to know how do we get exactly, there. Yeah. So chapter yeah. two, you get the spoiler, so it doesn't take long before you you find out about. This okay, event. no, no, that's okay, that's okay. I can live with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I just I did don't spoil the fun. Uh, yeah. yeah, because I am really interested interested because I know. Um, well, I know I know you work through the Inside Timer app, so I know. Uh, um, so I, I don't know what's going to be in the book, but I have sort of an idea of how you will tackle that. So I'm really curious whether I can see what you do on Inside Timer and in your nonfiction, whether I can see that translated into the into the novel. So I'm I'm quite curious, uh, uh, Teresa. I'm, I'm looking very much forward. Um, yeah. Well, I've been. Yeah. I must admit, Inside Timer has just been the most amazing app. One is I, I I call it a community, not an app, because we, we it connects. People. It's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah, you do connect to people. Yeah. But also, I find it is it's a great place to experiment with obviously initially I was experimenting with meditations and I didn't think I was a meditation teacher until they found me I thought I was an author had meditations on the side and and then they asked me to put a meditation up which I did and then I keep I kept experimenting well what happens if I just change the style of meditation what happens if I put a podcast up instead of a um, in, instead of a, a meditation what yeah. happens if I put a short story up there so um, one of my one of my fictional books was called The Germanatrix, and you'll love this. It's um, 22 short stories inspired by the major arcana. Yeah, you told me about this one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so they're, they're only fish, they're, they're probably three to 500 words long, you know, a minute and a half to two minutes long. And I've just finished serializing the 22 on Insight Timer. And what it's given me is a lot of confidence that people like my storytelling style, because it's a bit off the wall. And, uh, you know, like all, like all these things, I've not been trained yeah. in, I've not been in any courses. I do make it up as I go along and actually the stories come through, not not from, if you know what I mean. And uh, it's been great to see that people like my quirky uh, left field uh, style. Yeah, but I think that's a really great thing is that you, you just follow your curiosity. Yeah, yeah. Is that, would you say that, because um, th this soul ways, I think that clearly is you following your curiosity and see, can I pull this off? Can I take all these grand concepts and turn this turn this into a novel? Yeah, and and soul waves. Um, and again, I don't mind. This, it's not a spoiler. I went, you know, this this missing dark energy and dark matter that the cosmologists can't find. What if it is soul waves? What it is if it's the energy that connects every single consciousness, not just you and I, or you with your cat, or me with my dog, but also the the, the moon with the earth and the earth and all the planets with the sun and mm -hmm. the sun with all the other suns. Imagine that this energy that um, has been detected, the fact we can only see 4% of the physical universe. What if this is a conscious force? And so that's kind of the bigger exploration in, in the book. And, you know, back in 100 years ago, Einstein was just coming up with his theory of relativity. Yeah. Uh, and then from that came all these findings to say, well, actually, there's a, a lot of, the visible universe, it can't be everything, there must be something missing. So all this is, is a fictional conjecture 
about the nature of uh, this wonderful universe that we find ourselves in. Yes, yeah, so the nature of things, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So is it because um, I, I have I deal I deal a lot with people um, who procrastinate for whatever reason. So I want to talk about that as well. Whether um, all the other books in between, whether they were uh, projects that allowed you to not work on this one for whatever reason or whether you also think that when you first came up with the idea the world was not ready for a novel like that because we've it's been i mean the way the world has been developed in the past decade two decades it's been going quite fast mm. um well i think there's two two elements though one is that i've become a, I, I think i've become a better writer so in fact my first book uh, my first my, my first book was um uh called 100 Years of Ermintrude, and that was a, a set of short stories in poetry about three interlocking lives. Uh, and I wrote that kind of by accident in a 747 at 39,000 feet halfway across the Atlantic. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Uh, but the first serious book I wrote, um, that I intentionally wrote, was called Blocks, and it's how, it's how we get writers blocked, because people were approaching me asking me how to, to help them write a book, so I, to, to help them write a book. And I, I thought, well, I better write... Um, my experience of how I help people get through their writer's block. And, and as you know, often the writer's block is a, is a life block. Um, and then, but that was pretty much like a workshop manual. My second book was also like a workshop manual. So here's, here's a chapter, here's some exercises, here's another mm -hmm. chapter. Here's some yeah. exercises. Uh, and then after that, I was, I've always been a student of the tarot since I went on this, this particular journey. So I wrote two books um, on the major and min minor arcana of the tarot, a, a modern day interpretation of it. And then I wrote books which were, philosophical rambling so this is what you know tom thinks you know this is like burying my soul a bit more um and I, and and every and then i got involved in the mindfulness movement and so i wrote three books on mindfulness and then latterly i've written two um fairly spiritual books about the nature of us and what have you so if you like i've been ramping up to this book which is listen this is, this is everything that i possibly think and by the way it's all bonkers you know what i mean and, and i don't care what anyone thinks about it and that, so that's one and one answer to what you said. The other answer is, my intuition is now is the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Is that I've, I've been held back from publishing it, and the reason I say that is that um, since I've decided to publish it, all the things that I needed to get it out to a wider audience have unfolded. So had I tried to publish it two or three years ago, I think it wouldn't have quite had the same impact that it has now. So one, I've got a much bigger following on Insight Time than. I ever had you know, that idea that it takes all your life to be an overnight success. So I've got a modicum of success in terms of the following there. And I love the people there that have got to put the app together and what they're doing for, for the planet. Also the planet really needs it. You know, we've got, um, we've got the election over here. We've got um, Trump doing his thing and there's lots of yeah. weird things yeah. going on the planet where people are not looking up at space and going like, this is amazing that we're here on this, uh, this, this jewel, this heaven on earth. And so that the message of the book is let's respect each one of us and the fact we're all riding on this spaceship we call earth and uh, have a, we should be having a marvelous experience. You know, we've got the, the knowledge now about where we are in the scheme of things that we didn't have a hundred years ago with our, our eyes and ears in space and what have you. So mm -hmm. the fact that um, politics seems to be a uh, hundred years behind current thinking, you know, in terms of all they do is argue with each other. And uh, if one says black, the other says white and what have you. And, uh, you know, we're in a terrible state in the UK from a political perspective, from a consciousness perspective, we're in a marvellous position, you know. So, yeah. so in a way, the, the, the soul waves is, is an antith antithesis to all the current malaise that we see um, over media, really. You know, I always get that because I'm a quite, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself upbeat um, necessarily, but I'm hopeful. So I see the I see the good of things. Then I've always had discussions with people like, how can you say that about whomever I'm talking about? Well, um, this is going on in the world. Look at this happening. Look at this happening. And what you just said, like politically, uh, we are repeating exactly what we've said. We'd never repeat again. Mm -hmm. So we are not learning from history politically. But mm -hmm. at the same time, like there is this counter movement. Uh, people are becoming more conscious, and that gives me a lot of hope. Um, and this is how waves go. They do. Yeah. And so I'm, yeah. 20 years is 20 to 30 years is a new generation. And there's a lovely play I saw, must be five or six years ago, called All New People. And in 100 years' time, 110 years' time, it's All New People. 
So the current old guard are almost like dinosaurs clashing around. Uh, yeah, trying to keep up the system. Hang on to their positions of power. They will eventually go. And then the new breed of people will come in. And look, we're in a fantastic position now compared to where we were 100 years ago. Um, but, uh, you know, things things will change. And I, I reflect that in the book. It, start, it starts proper in 2059. And it's all written in the past tense as if it's a future history. Mm-hmm, so yeah. I, I talk about the excesses of the 20s, which is the decade we're just about to go into, and then how things start to turn around in the 30s and the, 50, and the 40s and the 50s. And I found out afterwards, uh, it's even got a genre I didn't even know existed. It's post-dystopian cyberpunk, which is, uh, and, and it's, it's cyberpunk a bit like a Mad Max type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Post-dystopian, because the dystopian bit is finished. And in the 19, in the 2050s, Earth gets back on, is that that humans get back on track again and they actually start to make a great success of things. Well, I think that's one of the reasons why your timing is really great because um, a lot of people are, um, because dystopian for the past 10 years, dystopian was the genre. Yeah. Whether it's it's zombies or whether it doesn't matter. Um, But there are people now go like, you know, I've, I've read that now. I want to read about, you know, what's next, like what, what, what if the world doesn't, because I think um, dystopian is fun to read if your current world does not reflect that. But if your Mm -hmm. escapism starts to look very much Mm -hmm. like your current world, it's no longer fun to read. No, Mm -hmm. because it's, it it hits too close to home. And you have these memes. um, I think they were immediately after Trump was elected. I'm sure they saw it again. Um, with all the debates on Brexit, that you have um, these memes, or the cartoons people drew, um, and also people um, having like, how do you call them? Like the, the, the signs you have outside shops where you can write on, like the little blackboards. The, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like sandwich board. Yeah, yeah the right. sandwich board, yeah, yeah. So that they, they write like, um, the dystopian section is now uh, is now moved to current affairs and stuff like yeah, that. I love that yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so I do think one of the reasons why people are getting a little tired of all the dystopian stuff is because that's no longer escapism. Yeah, yeah. So I start yeah. in the in twenty fifty nine when the world actually everyone's got back on their feet again, uh, but then things can still go a bit hey what hey what if you know what I mean. Yeah, clearly in chapter two. Uh, yeah. Have to do it. Well, but, but also there's a much bigger uh, cosmological theme that runs all the way through it that goes right across time and space and uh, I, it goes right back into prehistory as well I'm a great fan of uh, Rudolf Steiner and as you know Paul Foster case and uh, the, the, the the mystics of a few of a hundred years ago so I've taken a lot of the themes from uh, theosophy and that sort of stuff and brought that into the book mm-hmm. in a kind of modern uh, context as well um, and, and that's been a lot of fun to do because it, it, it's, it makes it a very spiritually themed book without being a spiritual book and that was all my always my aim I don't it doesn't want to be in the mind body spirit section of a of a, of a book and I, I looked around a lot for where it should sit uh in what genre and I haven't put it in anything to do with dystopia or whatever but I, it's very much um I think the genre on Amazon is metaphysical and visionary and in there, you've got um, pa- pa- Paolo Coelho, you've got um, okay, yeah, Mitch, yeah. Al- Mitch Album, Five Billion Meet in Heaven, and that sort of stuff. And it sits along that kind of book, really. Yeah, it's going to be a trip, I'm sure. I'm, I'm hoping, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> again, you know, slightly nervous. I'm, I've only just got it out to a few beta readers just now. It's been very, I don't think, only one other person's uh, read it in detail, uh, who gave, made, gave me the original proofread. Uh, and again, I met her through Insight Timer. And it's so precious. Um, I've had it correct. I had it proofread, so there's no. I don't think there's that many errors in it. And I've read the whole book out uh, to make the audio book, which is a great process to do. Um, but for many, many reasons, I didn't want uh, anyone to change the plot. If you know what I mean, because they're they're very intricately uh, woven together, and I didn't feel there was anyone I could entrust. To do anything with it that would that might have just taken some of the balance out of it okay so th- so this would be your decision not to uh like hire like a developmental editor correct yeah, yeah. who yeah. actually looks at the plot line and how is it working how is it functioning yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and i did take some advice early on in about the idea do you show and do you tell and uh, someone did say that some of my early chapters were very telling you know it's, it's this happened and this happened or what have you so I, that's why I, did, in, I put some other plot lines in there but it still is very much a, a telling kind of book 
but a lot of it is an homage to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's not the cool. same humour as that book, but mm -hmm. there's loads of humour. When you read it, there's loads of references in there. You go like, that's and it's going to be fun. Like, and this sort of stuff. So, and and so this is a nod and a wink to you know a, a muse, if you like. And I even um, credit him and uh, and Kurt Vonnegut as uh, as as my muses in this. I've taken their 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 themes. And taken some of these and put it in. There's not a copy of any of their books, but I've taken some of the themes I read in their books and plopped them in at various places throughout the book. So basically, what you did is you you use all kinds of sources and all kinds of reflections on the world and how it's how people think it's functioning. Um, so you you don't just did the uh, like let's say the academic research, but you also took uh, inspiration from other novelists. Yeah, there's yeah, there's a lot of cosmological research. So that the the moon phase is really important all the way through the book. So I've been checking checking the actual moon phase on certain days and times all the way through the book. Which is why we wanted to do this on the full moon. I know, and I, and why I'm publishing it on a full moon as well. Yeah. And um, and I also needed Mars and the Earth to be at certain points uh, 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 when when this calamity happens. I want Mars and Earth to be on opposite sides of the sun oh. at the date it happened. Back in two thousand and five, I had this. Uh, this lady who was a book coach, book mentor, and she said to me, don't stop writing. You know, just, just check, put, put any old date in and then check later yeah. um, for the date. So I put any old date in for when this, uh, this event happens in, in the future. And then I found an online solar system and I wound the solar system on. And on the date I'd chosen at random, Mars and the Earth were exactly where I wanted them to be. So you knew, is. you knew anyway, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So now, whether that's yeah. picking up on my future self or being there when the event happens, I don't know. Well, I have the same one. I because, I, like I said, like my own fantasy uh, trilogy, which is young adult uh, um, story. Mm -hmm. um, the moon is very important. Like the whole magic system right, is, mm -hmm. is you know, it works around the moon. Um, and how people interact with each other is very much influenced by these cycles. So I uh, like I always thought years ago I thought I'll publish this soon, right? I'll finish mm -hmm. soon. So I started working like okay, so when do I think I can have the first book finished? And then I started looking at that year's um, moon chart. Mm -hmm. So for me, my book uh, I'm not going to add an actual date to the book, but the, the year in my book starts in 2021. Okay, lovely. Because that fits all my, like, I need Venus transits and I've, all that. Uh, and that just fits. Oh, what a lovely coincidence. Isn't that yeah. amazing? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I needed all that. And, and it's not, it's the same, like, it's not going to be, so my work is very much, I'm curious. That's why one of the reasons I really want to uh, read it is how you keep the balance between, um, like, it's still being a novel and you sort of, like, bringing in all these concepts without it, like without people pull without pulling people out of the story and, and and my book is very freudian very post freudian and i'm exploring all these kinds of uh layers um, um in, in, in sub subjective layers that's what i'm exploring but it's a young mm. adult book interesting well i think yeah. the first version i wrote back in 2005 2006 that was probably 90 percent me telling lots of scientific facts with a, with a little bit of 10% of yeah. a novel running through it, if you know what I mean. Uh, and then, but this is, I hope the other way around, there's, there's lots of, there's lots of references. Yeah. My, my brother is much more technical than I, John, John Evans, and I got him to check the book out and uh, he was quite scathing about a couple of the things. He said, but if you invent these esoteric um, things that can happen in the cosmos, you can get away with anything. So he said, just put those two things in and no one can argue with you. So we yeah. just put two little plot changes in there, a little scientific drop-ins. And then, uh, uh, and if you go onto Wikipedia, you'll find that these things can happen, but they are uh, from a, uh, a storyteller's perspective, they're big, get big get around. So it meant I didn't have to do too much research and, uh, and, and, and some of the, the, some of the entities in the book are fictitious. So, you know, even stars and planets, some of the, these are fictitious, if you know what I mean, but no one can prove, prove it because of some little plot twists that I put in and make them unprovable. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's very yeah. clever. That's yeah. that. So that was my brother's yeah. help to say, well, just, just oh. invent this thing here. So no one, because no one can ever verify it because of the distances and, and all. I won't mention what they are because they will be spoilers. Um, but uh, th that's the way I got around it. And then I've got characters in there that say things, which I didn't really have before. And, and, uh, and that kind of thing. No, don't say, don't spoil. No, but it's, but it, that's, that's like, like I said, that's one of the reasons because it's, um, it's one of the discussions. Um, 
I've had a lot with people in the past and it, it very much goes to uh, like Stephen King is the one saying, you know, when you write a book, you just write a book. You don't, you know, get up on your soapbox and start preaching to the world. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I believe that when we write our own belief systems, our own principles, they will seep into our work. Mm -hmm. So if you are more conscious than other people about how you go about that, I don't think anything is necessarily wrong with it. As long as you have the balance between not actually preaching, but just making it part of your world. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that I'm always curious um, because that I, I do think a lot of people convince themselves that their books are separate from who they are. And I'm like, no, I, I do think for most of us, um, we write the world the way we see it. Yeah, yeah. And the more conscious we are of that, the more we can play with that, the more layers we can bring in. That's my pers very personal, not so humble opinion, and it's not a very popular one. Mm. Yeah, I've taken, and I think the original draft I had um, a bit more of a pop at politicians and religion. Um, okay. And, and I just took all those things out because it was, it was that, that was that version of Tom, if you know what I mean. And yeah, they, yeah. And I don't, they, they kind of, I've got two, maybe two little side mentions, not even half a sentence on both themes now as I, as I had like whole chapters, yeah. whole paragraphs on it before. You know what I mean? So that's all deleted because I didn't want it to ruin the flow of the, yeah. the of the story. Like, yeah. yeah. So you can say it, but be very subtle. And then the people who, who are on that same wavelength, they will pick up on it anyway. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. they will know they'll go like, ah, that's what you're doing here. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I like it's, that. It's pass, passing references, not, uh, not diatribes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, this book, you started all these years, 14 years ago. In between, you wrote 15 others. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think, or were any of the, these books excuses not to continue on with this project? Uh, no, in fact, um, I think now this is done, I've probably got um, a queue of about at least five or six other novels. Mm -hmm. This isn't like... So this not nonfiction, novels. This is, yeah, I'm thinking now I've done this, it's been such fun to do. Um, then why not continue? Why not continue? Because um, the scope of what you can do in a novel is far greater than what you can do in nonfiction. And I've written loads of nonfiction, but I've got ideas for more nonfiction books. But you know, the lines are blurring these days about what is a book and what is a an e-course or something like that. And then uh, yeah. one of the great, one of the hardest things, as I think you know and everyone knows is that it's, it's when you haven't written a book one of the hardest things to do is you think is to get the book published when the book pub, when, the, when the book's published then the next hardest thing to do is get to people to read it yeah. and what the insight timer app has done for me which has just been amazing it's it's produced a, a database of a community of all the people that seem to like my stuff so all i've yeah. got to do is upload something new and then uh, people will come and obviously with this book i'm doing something i've got another i've got another offshoot project uh, you probably see a guitar and a keyboard behind me yes. i'm going to do soul waves the album next year perfect which is the album inspired by the book a bit like um camel did snow goose um paul gallagher's uh, snow goose and it's going to be a set of uh, meditative journeys that go on to insight time free and they act as then as marketing to get people over to to read the book and stuff yeah like because that. they go like wait a second is is there a book out about this exactly. like, i really and, enjoyed and, this and it yeah. will be how to how to tune into soul waves how to get them to actually work in your as, as a theoretical thing let's imagine that uh, soul waves are real and one of the connecting centers for soul waves is the heart center so then the right people you need in your life just turn up at the right time the love of your life turns up all, all that kind of stuff your perfect job turns up if you uh, uh, if you become sensitive to soul waves, so I'm going to take this on and and uh, and and do the do the musical version of the book, if you know, which is an, an augmentation of the the audio version. But I've also then got lots of other ideas for books with a similar theme, where instead of actually writing the non-fiction version, because you know, as you know, I know um, been a student of the tarot for many many years, and I've got about um, two or three non-fiction books of the tarot that I could write. So why not do them as as fictional books? Because if I write the non-fiction oh, version, only people that are interested in the tarot will pick the book up. Yeah. Excuse me. <coughs> Whereas if I do the fiction version, and then tarot is like, it's not, it might not even mention the word tarot. When I first wrote my book, Flavors of Thought, the first edition of it didn't even mention the word tarot, even though it was modeled on the major, on, on the major arcana. Because I wanted people that didn't know the tarot to pick up 
the tarot energies. Yeah, but that's but that's the same. Like if I say to people, um, well, you know, in in this trilogy, I explore um, these particular post Freudian French feminist philosophers. Fabulous. Yeah. They're going to be like, yeah, no. But if I just weave it in there, and then that's a completely different way of going about. And you still tell, you still share that kind of knowledge with people. Yeah, and uh, these these archetypes. So the fool is an archetype. The high priestess is an archetype. You know, yeah. the emperor. The, even the charioteer is an archetype. You know, so you can put those themes in, and then people have done this really well. Like Paolo Coelho does it a lot. Um, uh, James Redfield and the Celestine Prophecy. You know, I love the idea of a missing Narcana. Uh, and a bit like this. Yeah, you said, yeah, 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 you told me a little bit about that before, about the missing, so that would be the 22nd. 23rd, yes. I'm, the, I know. the 23rd, the fool's the, is the, oh, yeah. Yeah, and I know, I know, I know, I know what it is as well. So, um, so I know what it is, but, but I could write a non-fiction book about it, which should be a sort of theory book. Um, but I'm kind of, I think it'd be a lot more fun to do it as a, as a, as novel. a fiction book, almost like the Holy and, Grail, yeah. Plus, the thing is, the people who follow you for your more metaphysical stuff on internet, they, they will read it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Because you already reached those people. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And you know, you just just you talking about the album and stuff makes me think was because I know you know Joanna Penn, mm -hmm. um, and she also she has some great episodes on um, how you can um, when you have one product like that that you have like this this one really great episode she does when she explains uh, so you have one book. But never mm -hmm. think of your one book as a one book because you have the ebook. Mm -hmm. There's maybe there's the paperback. Depending on the genre, maybe you have a really pretty hardback. Mm -hmm. um, you can do the audiobook. Mm -hmm. You can do some um, like for her, like she she works with maps and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think you can buy her the maps that are worked in the book. So you can do all these kinds of merchandise. Um, so yeah, all of that feeds into uh, this, the same, it was the same, it's the same little thing, but it all feeds into that. So it immediately made me think of that episode in which she really spells out what you can do with just this one book. Yeah, well, actually, well, I'll tell you, I'm going to share something with you, very exciting. I just want to finish off one other point from the question before. So a great way of me getting a nonfiction book out now is to record it as a 10 or 30 day course that goes on Inside Timer. So it never becomes a book necessarily, unless you want to then go and do a print version. So you do the audio version first. And what's great about Insight Timer, uh -huh. I've got my I've got my people on there, so that, that they they will then naturally go for the course and they get that information in a non-fictional kind of way, which is me in a in it being a lecturer. The, the course is on there; they want to be fifty percent information, fifty percent meditative, which is a nice format to have. But um, going back to getting a book out in a different format when I haven't been doing too much research apart from I do uh, listen to uh, Joanna Penn's uh, podcast and she's got one guy she interviewed recently got how he got his book into Netflix she was the person that got me into Find Away Voices the audiobook platform which I'm using she was the person that gave a nano uh, a code which allowed me to upload the two books the two versions of the book today to Ingram Spark for free because of NaNoWriMo. So there are lots of things. And, and Joanna and I, in our careers, have sort of dovetailed. I think I've been on her podcast three times. She's been on my podcast three yeah. times. We even live about 30 miles away from each other now, which is, uh, which is amazing. But we haven't met up. But we keep an eye on each other, and we, we look after each other's backs. And I did an unblocking session with Joanna years and years ago before she, uh, she started writing these yeah, copious amounts of books, which is, which is lovely. But the most exciting thing that happened recently, which I need to chase up on, is I found a lovely uh, marketeer over in the States. And I thought, I want to find, I want to find someone that's, that's got access to the US market because from a book perspective. Anyway, she's an expert at LARPs, which is uh, live action role playing games. Mm -hmm. And she said, and this is where you go online and then you, you, you'd be Gandalf, I'll be the Hobbit and you know, whatever. And then we do this, this role playing. And she's been looking for an author who would like to have their book role played. And I can that. totally see how your curiosity will get you exactly yeah. there. Yeah, and so uh, so yeah. people take characters out of the book, and then they then go and write new storylines for these characters that aren't in the book, and they just play with it, which is which is great. And I thought, what a great way to get a book out there. You know, again, these things weren't around ten years ago when I first no. thought of writing the book. So no, yeah. So that's that's going to give that a go in the new year for a bit of fun. 
Okay, but that's that, that. I mean, that just. But that's also inspiring to me that you can just try all these kinds of. And and that's for me how like always when I talk to you, like you make it sound like um, as long as you follow your curiosity, it, it's very enjoyable. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And I didn't know what it was going to be like to do this when I first started out. I didn't know what it was going to be a, a book with apocalypse in it, without it, with without the book being hopeless. And it isn't hopeless. Yeah. It's not like a Bruce Willisy sort of book, and it's not. That's not the thing. It won't. I've, I've been looking at um, how it can be converted into a series on on Netflix. Like I love Black Mirror and stuff like that, and I think it will be. I think the book itself would need a complete rewrite to to from a screenplay perspective. Mm -hmm. But the themes in the book, where soul waves connect people at random, that could easily be extrapolated into a into a series. A bit like tales from, that, the, from yeah. like tales from the unexpected. You know, things weird things happen uh, when people tune into their soul waves or ignore the soul waves. That's another thing. That can happen Which is that. always fun. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, but that. But that's that's also the thing that kind of works right now, right? You have Stranger Things. You have like, would you say you have like uh, Black Mirror? Like, so that actually works right now. Uh, a does, lot of yeah, people yeah. are into into these kind of uh, stories, so that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, there is. Didn't Joanna Penn do this course? She's done a few episodes on on the screenwriting. She she was gonna try. I don't know if she ever finished it, but she was gonna try and get one of her novels into a screenplay. Yeah, and there's lots of resources out there to do that. Yeah. In fact, I, I even um, went on one of these um, webinar calls just to learn a bit more about it. And, uh, and I, I, from that, I learned that the book, I didn't want to change the book so it was ready to be a screenplay. You read lots of books. Like all Dan Brown's books are just ready to virtually go straight from book mm -hmm. to screenplay. That's a, a talent that he's, he's, he's got. I didn't want to write that book initially anyway. Um, and but now I feel I could if I wanted to. So, for example, if the Missing Arcana book that could go straight to it's it's very ready to be a, a screenplay. Whereas this 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 book was something I've got a personal passion for, mm -hmm. and I wasn't interested at that time in in ch chasing that particular angle because this um, th it's got many ways it could appear in a screenplay, but uh, not to write. The, the writing of a screenplay would have constructed strictly slightly. You know, you could have keep putting these uh, cliffhangers yeah. in and lots of stuff, which I didn't want to do that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah it's a different way. And I think these days, um, I don't know if you listen to these guys, but you have, I don't know what the new podcast is called. There were, there were the self, the self publishing, there were the self publishing podcast. They've gone on to something different, but I also, I, I know that um, I started following them through Joanna Penn because she invites them. Mm -hmm. um, on and off um, and the other way around as well I think um, and they I, I believe they also start at one point they started writing their stuff because the, as they got more into screenwriting themselves mm -hmm. they started to write their current stuff their new stuff already in that format so their novels become they were already writing serials so not series yeah. but serials more of, sort of episodic um, mm -hmm. but they started doing that more and more uh, because it fits the screenwriting format more easily if you do get uh, somebody who wants to turn it into a series. Or yeah, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that as a strategy. I, I love that strategy. No. I'll probably do that next, as I say, only because I want to explore as a writer what it's like to write in that style. You know, and every book I've done has been an exploration of what it's like to write a book in a different style. Yeah, so it's, it's all about... Um, I think you'll learn from it anyway, and it will, uh, it will make you a better writer. Yeah. Uh, knowing all these kinds of uh, all these kinds of uh, um, ways of going about storytelling, yeah, because yeah. it just is, it's, it's just a different way of doing a story. But then again, we can learn a lot from really good films and series, like how are they built up, how is the plot, like how but there's so much you can learn from that. And even though like a novel has different rules, I think in the end, storytelling has a particular formula. It does, and I, I must admit, well, the one thing, even though I've not ever been trained, I've never been in any writing classes or anything like that, people will say, well, maybe that shows my writing, I don't know, but uh, one thing I did do was uh, I, I studied hypnotherapy many, many years ago, and I learned the, uh, I learned the art of hypnotic language and also of nested loops, where you put a loop in and you, so you, you drop something in and you don't finish it off. And there's a comedian over in the UK, he's not alive now, um, and Ronnie Corbett, this, and he used to do these these jokes and he's, he'd start one joke and not finish it then he'd open up another joke and they'd open up another joke then he'd close, start closing the jokes down and if, if the one thing that is in soul waves is very much opening loops 
and yeah. and and you know what? There's not only two or three sequels there. There's also about three prequels as well. And I think that's great because then, as an author, you really like. If you never want to write those, fine. But if you do yeah. want to write those, but it's also I think the opening loops. We actually had a um, we had a talk on that during the uh, twenty books to fifty k conference in Edinburgh, yeah. and everybody was writing down because as if that was like new information. Uh, it was about opening loops, like keeping these loops, opening like opening up a few, close yeah. one. Because that's when people go like, and then what? And then what happened? And then what happened? And then what happened? That's that, that's how you get them like on the, on the, um, that's how you get them fired up. But that's why, yeah. what, what you just said um, about never having followed any like writing class or whatever. I deal a lot, like most of my writing clients um, come to me and they, they, they deal with issues of confidence. Mm -hmm. imposter syndrome right mm -hmm. they're all waiting for the moment that somebody tells them yeah you know what don't quit your day job um burn this and, and never look back right that's what they're all mm. waiting for and i think actually everybody still struggles with that to a certain extent we'll all have days that we go like what, what am i even doing um well i can i can yeah. share some of my experience i think might be useful to some people listening here is that when i started out on this journey uh, I've, it, it's now, I think it must be 15 or 16 years ago since I started. I gave up a perfectly good job because I, I didn't like the people I was working with. And I wrote um, this book, The 100 Years of Ermintree book. And then what happened, people approached me and I became a, a writing mentor. And I, so I, would, I funded myself to write by doing something inside the publication, in the publishing industry, which yeah. is a great thing to do. So if you're, if you're an artist, you can do book covers and that kind of thing and fund yourself yeah. through it. So don't give up your day job, but make your day job associated somehow in, in publishing because then you, you learn. And the biggest breakthrough for me, and I had no idea about this at all, was when Insight Timer found me. And I thought I was a, an author with meditations on the side. As yeah, that's what you said, yeah. And they, and they found me and, they, and they, I put, put one of my free meditations up there. And then I discovered that I was a meditation teacher who hadn't been inside an ashram or studied meditation. And all my meditations are only stories for the mind. They're just, they're just one, mind wandering stories, reframes, if you like. And then uh, Insight Timer have now got uh, an e-commerce side of things. So most of it is free. And I'm uh, the only free app on the on the planet, completely free app on the planet. Um, and so I love the fact that um, I think I've had over 2.2 million listens for, for free, which is great. But also they've now got an e-commerce site where there's premium content. And that, that, that provides a nice monthly income for me, mm -hmm. which then allows me to, um, to, to write freely at the rest of the time. Now, what's great about that, and the lesson is, don't assume your revenue is going to come from the main thing you're doing. Allow it to come from yeah. other sources. Like we talk about these LARP games or whatever, or the other format that you yeah. do. Bit, we've got to be open for it to come from different ways. But I do know um, just by giving lots of stuff away for free, the karmic, um, uh, yeah. the, the, the karma will come back to you. It does this. What, what so goes much. around comes around. And that, <laughs> what, what, the, the thing is, when we think about karma, we think about the bad things that we do, right? that karmas come around and bite you in the ass. But I'm like, but it's also like, so if you put out good one way or the other, yeah. uh, it will come back to you. Yeah. That, that's, that's simply how the, how the universe works. But I yeah. do. Yeah. But it's the curiosity thing because I, I did this random thing uh, last week and I like, I don't know how, what comes of this. Actually it was, it sort of goes back um, to another story. Like I, so what I do here on the Island in Cyprus, I do uh, a, a lot of charity for the, for the cats, for the stray cats. Mm -hmm. Everybody who follows me on Instagram knows that. It's very aware of that. Um, and at one point I, I was emceeing because we did like, uh, uh, we had like a, a, a raffle and stuff like that, you know, to sort of uh, a charity event. And I was emceeing and one of the, one of the women who's also closely involved came up uh, and she does the pub quiz every Tuesday in, in one of the local bars up the hill. Uh -huh. and and so we were talking about because she she was like you're doing this really well and it was the first time for me and I'm, I'm i'm quite an introvert so being on a stage uh with my, the lights on me that's not my most comfortable uh, mm -hmm. place so she's like you're doing quite well and i was like well this is my first time and then she said something really funny she said you know i never thought that doing this being on a podium and doing mm -hmm. like a pop quiz every week would pay my rent mm -hmm. she's she's also a writer there you go. Um, and then I had this weirdest thing recent, uh, for last week that um, 
a guy I know from my complex, like I live in this complex and we, sh we share a, a pool. Um, and this guy emailed me and he had this idea for, um, like he has a podcast on music. He, he makes music, particular kind of music. Mm -hmm. And he needed a woman's voice for some ad reads. Mm -hmm. And he said, I just, I just thought of you. Could you come over? And he has this perfect studio in his house. Right. Mm -hmm. So I never, I, I've never been in a studio like that. So we just had fun for two hours, you know, kept recording or whatever. And he did this whole bit with his, him asking a question, me explaining what the, the company was about that he was trying to sell the ads to. Uh, and I was just, cause I was always, um, I was kind of raised with the whole, you know, can you keep it down? Um, so, so the, I was always a bit of a, um, an exciting, like an enthusiastic child. So the, the adults around me were always like, could you, could you lower your voice? Could you be, be so, so I never knew. Well, so the, the, I, I don't think of my, I'm not particularly fond of my voice. So what happened? And of course, like he did the whole post-production and I did an actual voice that fitted the company. So the, the, the company sent it back and said, we did this with it. What do you think? And they cut the guy's voice. And so they only had me left doing all these little bits and they love it. They just fell in love with my voice. And I'm like, so I don't know if that's going to be something, right? But I, yeah, I'm the same. You hear yourself through your through your cheekbones. Yeah, and it's so weird. you hear yourself quite thinly, yeah. right? And and so I thought I had a terrible voice as well, but I've got a really good microphone which picks up the bass and what have you. And uh, and I now know that that works really well in a mentative um, sense. And also, I did my own audio book, as you know. And you know, you, you allow you to tell the other story. So again, you know, I became a, a writer's mentor by accident. I became a meditation guide by accident. And I know there's other things that I can be by accident. And the only reason the accidents happen is by putting yourself out there and trying something different. So yeah, now saying, I'm trying yes, to do the I'm weirdest doing, thing. A novelist, you know, and, and I know yeah. I'm going to get some four and five star reviews. I know I'm going to get some one and two star reviews. I know some people are going to pick up on the science. And say, well, yeah. you know, it can't happen like that. But you know, it's a bit like Harry Potter. You can't have invisibility cloaks, cloaks, uh, cloaks, and and wands and stuff like that. So I kind of put put some of the more weird things in there in mm -hmm. that kind of area. So it's just a book and it's just a story. But I know some people will take umbrage at it. Yeah, and there will be an audience. But that's so that's the idea. It's like it's it's it's, yeah. it's you just follow that. And, oh, yeah. and I was just like, that sounds like fun. Let's just try it. Like, I, I never thought I could do that. But now I'm like, okay. And so may, maybe that, maybe in five years, uh, I'll do radio spots. Who knows? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, find the way voices I mentioned to you. I found them through Joanna Penn. You wanted to and, talk about that. Yeah. So that's, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a, a place to get your audio book out. Yeah. And you don't yeah. have to have, um, uh, with, with ACX, you have to have a print or um, uh, an a print or a Kindle book out already and associated with it. I think they're changing that now. They might be allowing you. Uh, so, so you have to have an ebook or a, or a, or a hardback or a paperback. Yeah. yeah okay. An okay. Or an, an yeah. ISBN or an ASIN that you can refer to. With Final Wave, obviously, you don't need to do that. Um, but I think it helps if, if you do. Um, but also, they have a platform where you can go on as a narrator and pitch yourself as a narrator and people find you. Ah, so that's a way you can make money. Which you can do on ACX as well, to be fair, right? So yeah. you can, if, if you fancy doing that, and you've got a, a tame um, studio right next to you, then uh, then there could be a wonderful career for you then. Someone, someone might say, well, actually, uh, you know what? My book is set in uh, Northern Europe, and I need a sort of Scandinavian, Netherlands, Dutch voice for it. And you yeah, just yeah. a person that they didn't know existed. Or... And the other thing that happens is they find you through these podcasts as well, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what this, that's, that's what we did. I, I keep pointing backwards because that's where the guy lives. Um, that's actually, because we were going, I, I can do whatever voice, like depending on who I talk to. Uh, like I was in, I was in Scotland for two weeks. Yeah, I'll sound more Scottish. That's just what happens, right? If yeah. I've been talking to somebody from Canada for, for a long time, yeah, my voice will change. So he wanted, we, we, he wanted, mm, for me not to go American because the company was American, but this was, uh, so this is a very European based podcast. The yeah. guy who produces it is also Dutch. Mm -hmm. So we got to this very sort of, uh, not very British, but very clear, coherent, very neutral kind of European sounding voice. Okay. And apparently I can pull that off. Um, so that's what they loved about it. It was really, it was really fun. Well, just pick yeah. yourself up on, on finding way voices and, and feel my fun. See what happens. Know? See what happens. <laughs>
Yeah. yeah, but that's like what you said. Like um, I've had the discussion with, with with a client before, who was so the client, right? So I was editing his books, but he was pushing me to finish my novels. Mm-hmm. Um, as as we were going over the edits, and because he was like, "Then you can quit your day job." But I'm like, but my day job, I'm a writing coach, I'm an editor, um, I put all these uh, books out now on, on, on creative tarot, so how can you uh, be a creative and how can you use tarot to get mm-hmm. out of your own way, to get out of your blocks, to keep going, to flash out your narrative and, and all that. I love that stuff. Like, it was never my goal to be a full-time author. And did I tell you, yeah. we're talking about different ways of getting your books out, did I tell you I found a print-on-demand card producer that does sets of tarot cards? You you did tell me that other people have told me that, and it's on my list. It's on my list to create my own oracle do, deck. Not only do they do that, they've now got print on demand games as well, board games. So you print okay. the board game, the the game, and then you get all the little uh, components, the the characters and the these is that, things. Is that through three D printing? I don't know how they do it. Well, they've got some lots of standard characters and and bits and pieces. Um, but I, so print on demand cards, print on demand games. As well. okay, so, I, I want that link because I I know I, it's on. So I have a massive vision board, mm-hmm. and on it is uh, achievements of this year, and then yeah. the goals. So I put like once I finish it, it goes up. So it's it's a massive list. Um, yeah. Like I said before we started recording, like it's it's so easy to get overwhelmed, and I constantly feel like I'm dropping the ball. But having that there, seeing how many books I publish, what I've been working on, other stuff I've did. You know, it sort of makes you realize, yeah, it's been quite a productive year. But so on my back burner list, I have like lists, like these are my priorities. Uh, these are the books I want to write. These are my back burner projects. One of them is I want to create an Oracle deck for creatives. Fantastic. Yeah. So I do want, I, I do want to know how do you do print on demand? Uh, and also um, as it happens, I've helped someone else do a deck, but also I'm very much into the meta structure of decks. So we should have a separate call about that. So I know all the theory about how a deck should be constructed. Oh, I need to some know. of the stuff yeah. you can put in it that goes into the unconscious mind. So it works at other levels. And stuff um, like that. So, I need to know that because that's my thing. And it's, that's what I started telling you about before when I talked about my clients not having the confidence and you saying you don't do the master classes. So oh. how do you know you can write? A lot of people just pick up. Like if you read stories enough, you know how a story works because the moment you read a book that doesn't listen to these rules, mm-hmm. you're disappointed, you're thrown off. So you know exactly how a story functions. You're just not conscious of how it functions. And this is why we read all these books on plots and whatever. But if you just, if you can quiet that voice, t- like trying to tell you that you don't know how to do this, you're not a writer, uh, you've never read a book about this. If you can calm that down, you know exactly how it how a story functions of course you, you can you can use help did i get the balance right are there enough layers in is it interesting enough um the, the grammatical stuff uh the style stuff that's all stuff you can get help with mm-hmm. uh, yeah, all my books but, have got but, yeah. to them, so they've all got, all got another structure behind the actual structure yeah. and with, with card decks there's another structure and what you can do then instead of having a, a spread of cards which is like a fortune telling spread mm-hmm. you can spreads which are more like spells so you cast them into the world and then whatever you put, whatever intention you put into that um, cast manifests as well. So it's kind of we it's need magic, to talk about like, all, like all magic. It's only magic unless you know how to magic. So once you know the trick, then it's not magic after all. No, but we need to talk. We do need to talk. It's kind about of the meta that. science yeah. behind the, the tarot. We'll do that as a separate conversation. Or maybe we'll do it as a podcast and we'll uh, yeah, but we do need to talk about that because this is the, I think that this is for me, 2020 will bring more of that. At least, if not 2020, the next decade will be more about me going that direction anyway. Uh, yeah, and 2020. I know you, 2023? You'll, you'll see a lot of stuff in 2020 because I, I purposely held the book back. I could have published it in, in December, but I held it back into 2020 because if you publish a, a 2019 book, it's already a year old. Uh, uh, a month later in 2020. It is true. Yeah. There'll be a lot in 2020 about the vision. You know, a lot of people will be using it as a pun. And and because I've written a book about the near future, then obviously there's a lot of 2020 vision in, in the book. And if we use if we use a device like the tarot, uh, what you can do is use it to create your own future, which is quite a magical thing to do. Yeah. Well, and you said that for me, because you once did um, 
you calculated something with my birthday and you said 34 will be the year for me and I turned 34 next year uh, in 2020. Yeah, so let's yeah. see. But I do, and, 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 and uh, so I do believe I'm, I'm going in the direction. And it's funny because you, you told me a few months ago that I needed to put a, a, a meditation on, Insta, uh, on Insight Timer. Mm-hmm. which I did because it was following my curiosity. But of course, you know how I recorded it here on this couch in my living room with this thing. Mm-hmm. So it's funny because at my first, um, I don't know how many reviews I have on it now, but my, the first one said, this is horrible. <laughs> but because of this, the sound was just bad, right? And then there uh-huh. were other, yeah, so in the meantime, yeah. and then I was like, I should not have done that. I should not have listened to Tom. But then, of course, a few months later, I looked again and somebody said, Content was really great. Yes, there were some noises, but you know, if you listen, so I was like, if I just, if I just know how to build like a good studio, or maybe ask my neighbor, uh, can I exactly. use your studio once in a while? You can, yeah, you, you can upload another MP3 any any time. You know, yeah, so, uh, but that's yeah, that's my thing. Is like the following the curiosity. Sometimes you think you fall flat on your face, mm-hmm. but maybe you just need to tweak it. Doesn't matter. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And I've I've got three versions of meditations up there that are new because of feedback from the community and all of them said it's too short. So I was I I was thinking is this is the imposter syndrome you're talking about. I thought nobody wants to listen to me, so I'll just do short meditations. So I won't I won't take too much of their time up, if you know what I mean. And here's a five minute one, here's a ten minute one. And the criticism I got was saying, Can we have a longer version? And so you take oh. the you take the, the community feedback and then you use it and use then you it. say, Right, then it gives you the bravery to say, Well actually, you know what, I don't need to speak. I can speak and then we have some gaps and then some more gaps and some longer gaps and this sort of stuff. So it, feedback it, is really, really important. That's why I want to get a novel out there because I want to know what people think. And uh, so, as I say, that I don't want, I really don't want just four and five star reviews. I want people yeah. to say honestly what they think. Well, Otherwise, you do know. I've got too many good reviews that anyway, it's a bit false anyway. You know? Yeah, but you, you don't count. That's what we say anyway. You don't count un- un- until your first one star review. I got a great one for my book, The Zone, about how you get into the zone. And someone said, it made me laugh. He said, more like the Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That, well, the, the the thing for 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 because I also write romance with under a pen name with a friend. Okay. And so when we had a when we had our first one star review, we were like, now we made it, and then we found out it was actually this person, um, on Goodreads, who just every every book in that entire genre, they yeah. give one stars. So we were like, so we get a one star and it's a known troll. That doesn't really count, does it? Um, so now we're you still like, proper, you, know, you want a normal person to I give want you a problem. We do have a really good two star review on Amazon. Fantastic. And the person really explained, I'm like, perfect, thank you. And the person also said, the next book better. So I'm like, okay, so you're going to read the next book. That's great. Brilliant stuff. I love it. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Cause we're on the hour now. Although we're not on the hour. I completely forgot what time I started this. Is there anything else you wanted to say in terms of advice or wanted to talk about we talked about the the you really wanted to talk about the uh, um the alternative for acx because a lot of people are searching yeah, for so, that right now so while while i was writing this book uh, several things happened the first is that the the ways i've been publishing my old books alternatives came up and i just came i was just uh, observing them and then when it came around to publishing i used both the the alternatives and um and I think it's going to give wider uh, reach to it all, but also things change in the publishing industry. So these weren't around uh, 10 years ago, uh, for even five years ago. Now they're there. And so it's really important that if you want to be a writer, you're always playing and always testing things out. Yeah. And maybe you don't want to be a beta user, but you want to just get in on, on the cusp of things. Um, and, you know, if you're not in the game, then you won't ever play. And it's, it's good to play. Uh, I really think it is. And uh, the other thing I'd say to anybody that wants to get into this world is also start a podcast because they're the best networking thing I've ever done. I've, yes. I haven't been doing too much of my podcast this year because I've been working on the book, but I've got, a, yeah. I've got one of these um, uh, more uh, desks that you can, standing desks that motorize up and down and you can draw on it. And I've got a whole list of people and you're on that list, by the way, coming on the podcast next year. It's just the best networking tool ever. 
and it's a great way of uh, finding new people. So I know that your tribe will find me through this. I hope that when you come on my podcast, my tribe will, will find you. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. and one of the things that as writers, which is, it, you know, we're not competitors. You know, you're writing books, I'm writing books. You're going to write books about the tarot. I'm going to write books about the tarot. But even though we're writing about the same subject, there's no way we're competitors. Uh, we, no. you know, we're co-creators. And that's, that's the new way of doing things. You know, we can pull each of us up with our, with our bootstraps. I think it's actually wonderful if we can do well, that. That's why I like, I really feel for me, I was just, uh, cause it's the, it's the full moon tonight. Right. So I, I tend to do, um, an extra sp like tarot spread. Uh, and there was this one spread, um, but one of the people I follow on Instagram and it was very clear with just three cards. So the first one was closure. So what do you need to, um, let go of, which was the chariot, the chariot for me, which I found interesting, but I think it's just, you know, the season, the seasons are changing. Yeah. So you can be a little less out there and, and pushing for things and you can, you know, just draw back a little bit and just, you know, um, refill your cup. Um, and one of the, 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 one of the cards was like, so how do you, uh, like, what can you sort of, how, how do you expand from, from 2019 onwards? And I got the three of cups mm -hmm. and I really felt like, feel like 2019 for me was, um, um meeting the right people, getting it like, you know, uh, doing collaborative work starting things and I, I remember um i remember when i was um going i was on my way to the 20 books uh to 50k conference in edinburgh and one of the guys uh, he's from san francisco actually lives very close to my hometown so we were on the same play uh, we were on the same flight so we so we um we met on the Amsterdam airport and then we traveled together on the bus from uh, edinburgh airport to our uh where we were staying um, and already in the bus, um, I was like, I'm now working on on, on a book on tarot spreads. And I, I think I want, at one point I want to add some meditations. He was working on meditations and, and we didn't go, oh no, we're doing the same thing. We were like, how can we, how can we maybe write this together then? That was, and, and I just met the guy a few hours before. Yeah, yeah. So it's a complete, it's just, you, you look at, okay, so how can we do this together? Instead of, yeah. you've, seen, you've seen I do things with Siri uh, in, yes. in Norway, who I've never met, you know, and we've created some lovely things uh, together. She's actually illustrated a set of uh, cards for a client that I introduced to her from, from Dubai. She's, she's never met. It's an English person I'd never met. Uh, and, and she wanted a set of cards. I helped her out with the, the meta structure of the cards. Siri did the illustrations and what have you. I got my music for my meditations comes from a, a, a an amazing guy up in Scandinavia uh, who I met through Insight Timer. Yeah. And I love this idea that one plus one equals equals three, you know, and, and we can do these wonderful things together across the globe without meeting. I hope we'll meet one day, you never know. Yeah, and, you know, and I'm, like, that's my point. It's like, I'm, I'm also, I work with so many people. Some I've met in the meantime, some I haven't, but it does, it's not, I've always been really good at this, these online making, like on, like meeting people online, making friendships online. And people have always looked at me like, how do you, Maybe because as an introvert, it's easier. Um, but yeah, nowadays it's so normal. Like you work with this, this, this person does your cover. You've never seen them before. This person is your mm -hmm. VA and they live in America. Um, and yeah. I think that's another important thing. I can design my own covers. I can layer the insides of books out. And this time, this book was so important for me. I paid a professional cover designer to so, do yeah. the cover. I paid someone to do the inside and even to the EPUB. They said, are you sure you don't want to do your own EPUB? No, I want you to lay it out. And you know what? They did a better job than I would have done. And in the time that I, it would have taken me to do it, not as well as them, other things have unfolded for me. So even yeah. though you can do everything, it's not you don't have to necessarily you know, get, get the right people in. Yeah, and if you find the right person and they understand what you're doing. Yeah. They I think can that's very important. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I I like it. Like it's 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 we, we really have to have to stop thinking. And honestly, this also this this perspective also for me also comes from Joanna Penn. That mm -hmm. one of the first episodes I ever listened to, she said uh, something about we tend to see each other as competitors. But the mm -hmm. more books that are out there, the more people will read. Yeah. It's not, it's not, if I write a romance and you write a romance, who are they going to read? Probably if they're good enough, they're going to read both. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of, there's a lot of readers out there. There's also a lot of people in the world that can't read yet. So we've got a lot of untapped potential. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that's, so that I really love that. Like it's, 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 you're all in this together. And that's what I had the whole, the whole week I was in, in Edinburgh because it was a combination of a conference and a retreat. Like I kept feeling this whole, we all walk each other home. 
Yeah, you know, at the end of the day, yeah. We've got all the people that aren't alive yet are the ones that are alive after we're not here. But still we, uh, you know, they you say go. you could, there's only one that you can take with you, which is your evolution. And the only thing you can leave behind is, is yeah. your art. That's even further on. Yeah. Yeah. So imagine, exactly. imagine. Well, I've, got a theory, I've got a theory. If you reincarnate, sometimes you read books that you read, you wrote uh, in previous lives as well. So you can leave messages for yourself down the timelines. Oh, that would be interesting. I don't know if I was a writer I before, though. I read one. I read one that I I wrote, and I and when, as I read it, I, all the words I went, I know all this already, and I was vibrating, and it was all reabsorbing into me. It was quite an amazing. Oh, book that's to read. that's interesting, yeah, because then you remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So the potentiality is this. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Yeah, yeah, and across, you know, and the, and then it's not just this planet; it's all the other planets in the cosmos as well. But that I won't talk any more about that because that will be a spoiler. Yes, and that's people need to read the book once it out. Once it's out, yeah, yeah. So the publication date is the tenth of January or something. What is 10th it? Tenth of January, which is two full moons away from now. Yeah, two two moons. Two full moons. That's easier. Two full moons away. Yeah. 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 Great. Anything else you want to share? Oh, just real thanks for. Um, doing this today so so much fun and uh, the timing is absolutely impeccable really. well we i think we both believe in divine time for sure yeah yeah, yeah. so, so we'll speak again soon. yes and make sure to send me all the links and i'll put the links in my i, I, I call them show notes but i mean i i still don't have a proper podcast um which i will at some point because otherwise you're gonna tell me to do it um and so i will link all um i will Put all the links in there. Uh, also yeah, I've got a lovely order. blog. I've got it in front of me called "The Slowest Book I've Ever Written," and that tells you the backstory about the tarantula and all this other stuff. See, that's so, the stuff. That's the stuff I want to. I want to put in there. So people I'll, put the, I'll send you a link to the uh, print-on-demand uh, card company and gaming company because yes. it, obviously you're interested. There might be someone else that's uh, listening to this or watching this. Might be interesting. I'm assuming because that's these days. That's kind of the company I'm keeping. So uh, um, that's the way the soul waves anyway. connect us. That's for sure. Yeah. Yes, and we will schedule another talk. Uh, we'll do to that. talk Fantastic. about oracle decks and tarot decks. Okay, we'll thank you so much. Take care. Lovely to see you.